Hello guys, it's Modest Major here. Uh, today I'm bringing you some commentary with some Overwatch 2 uh, gameplay in the background. You can see I'm playing a bit of support. Uh, that's just... I, I always think support's a great thing like Mercy, because for me, I get to be lazy as anything. Some people don't like playing uh, support, and you know, you get this whole issue in the Overwatch of uh, support queue being really, really low rated. I love playing support, mate, because I can just point, click, sit around, and do absolutely nothing all game and still feel good about myself. And my team ends up loving me. And I just hard commit to heal. I don't try and be a hero. Uh, and that's great. Uh, but I was using this as a backdrop really to talk about um, my thoughts regarding Battle Royales, uh, Team Slayer games. Um, and more so why I think like the, the old age of Team Slayers and um, you know hardcore arena shooters are over. Uh, I actually talked about this uh, not too long ago on my stream, and I wanted to take it to my YouTube. Um, and, you know, realistically, if you look at shooters, I think they've really been pivoting from what is a core shooter. Back in the day, when I used to play, um, you know, pick up a new multiplayer title, um, we had things like Unreal Tournament were kicking, you know, really early. I mean, to be honest, Unreal Tournament was a little bit before my time, but it was still very much in the public eye, the public perception. Uh, you had Quake, and then those kind of fizzled out and led way to uh, Halo, Call of Duty. Um, but I think even even going as far back from then, you can see the shift from Unreal Tournament and Quake to Halo and uh, Call of Duty. You can see the shift happening where it's like they're trying to move into an experience that doesn't just represent the shooting aspect of the game. If we were looking at shooting and trying to produce the shooter that just rewarded the best shooter physically possible, that rewarded the best use of mechanics physically possible, and all the adrenaline was brought from that, you know, games like Quake and Unreal would probably still be on top, albeit with a fresh lick of paint and maybe some new guns here and there. Um, but I think over time, people have really wanted an experience different. And I think when you move from to Call of Duty and Halo, which are still kind of like they have their Team Slayer modes and they have their Domination modes, they have their Objective modes, um, they were still at the forefront of the industry for quite some time. Um, and then as we moved towards the Fortnite era um, of gaming, and then obviously Black Ops 2 had its Battle Royale, um, and then a bunch of games, you know, Apex Legends started, uh, you know, threw its hat into the arena. We saw another pivot uh, to the whole, um, you know, battle royale, uh, spawning in and seeing how long you can go uh, on one life. And um, I, I thought it was interesting to talk about and to discuss, like, why that happened. Uh, you know, why is it that nowadays when a Call of Duty releases... Team Slayer and the Domination, you know, whilst they, or whilst they still do well quite, uh, you know, commercially at a competitive level, people still like watching the competition um, and there is investment. Definitely the numbers have drifted more so towards uh, the Modern Warfare release of Battle Royale and uh, just other, uh, other release in general, you know, PUBG back in the day as well. Uh, why did that change happen? And uh, to me, I think I can see a clear reason as to why, uh, which is I believe that there's this um, rift happening where people are getting more frustrated at the idea that the average player base is pretty darn good at video games. Um, another way of putting this kind of a metaphor I put is that if you think about... Um, what if you think about like how we exist as humans today uh, we as humans are bolstered by having mobile phone technology for example having consistent technology to the internet uh you know consistent connectivity to the internet consistent connectivity to the world at large uh, i think as a whole we, we kind of almost have like this cybernetic improvement uh, as humans whilst it's not like built into us that's probably going to be the eventual goal um, there's things that improve us, um, you know, massively, you know, you can answer a question that you wouldn't have been able to answer in two seconds just by clicking a few buttons on your phone and saying, well, why did this happen? Um, you know, you can research things easily. Uh, you can use things like apps to, uh, improve the stability and the quality of your life, fitness apps, meditation apps. Um, you know, you can play music to entertain yourself. I just saw that because media player came on stream for a second, but you get the drift. 
Um, there's ways in which we can improve ourselves. And I think as a whole, gamers have improved so drastically, the average gamer, just by virtue of how technology has improved. You drop into a lobby now, um, in a 6v6 lobby or a 5v5 lobby, let's say, of whatever preferred game you play, and there's going to be people who are just flat out better than you in the game that flat out you don't feel like you have a chance against because they've done their research with the the, the right resources of time um, and the internet at your disposal. People can get so swiftly ahead. Um, if you remember when games used to release when you were younger, uh, used to be a case of uh, word of mouth would have to spread for a really long time. Um, there was things like strategy guides that people could read, but not everyone, you know, a minority of people had access to these strategy guides. A lot of the time, you know, let's say you're playing Pokemon, it was what you heard on your street. You know, the amount of times I'd come out and people would go, oh, did you know that you can trade this Pokemon here if you find him on this route for this Pokemon? Oh, I didn't know that. That would be something you would look up in two seconds online. You would find out. There'd probably be a YouTube video, how to get shiny uh, X Pokemon, how to get this legendary. Um... You know, these videos have hundreds of thousands of views, and the same applies to shooters. Um, you know, what's the best gun loadout? What's the best kill streak to load? What's the best, uh, you know, game plan for X map, Y map? People can just improve at such a rapid rate. And I think uh, the idea of being able to get consistent wins, especially when you factor in things like skill based matchmaking, the, uh, the, the concept of getting consistent wins at shooters, just jumping into matchmaking as either a casual, a semi-casual, or just some sort of player who has a basic interest in the game, it's not going to happen because you're, you're not going to feel like you're on top. And I think a lot of what makes a shooter game popular is the power trip aspect of it. I think Modern Warfare 2 showcased this excellently when it first came out because the thrill of being able to get a kill streak that leads into another kill streak that leads into another kill streak was absolutely monumental for some people. Just everyone working to build towards nukes, working to build towards their first chopper gunners. And, uh, you know, back in the day, it, it seemed like a viable concept for anyone to be able to pull off. Uh, you know, you got lucky with finding a, a Harrier airstrike, which led into a chopper, which led into a nuke. It wasn't, you know, rocket science. And the average lobby wasn't so insanely hard and so insanely stacked that doing it was out of the question. You loaded the right gun, the right type um, on the right map. This sort of thing was feasible. But over time, it's getting less and less feasible. If I was to uh, open up a game of Halo Infinite right now, the idea that I could rule and dominate the average lobby has gone down drastically and i don't think i've gotten that much worse of a player i just think players have gotten better players have gotten smarter whilst you can uh you know get better at these games you actually have to put in work time and if you don't have that time at your disposable for the average person that's going to be very demotivating um and i think where battle royales step in to fill in that void and fill in those shoes is that getting a win in a battle royale doesn't necessarily involve you being the greatest player on the world um, you know, it can be difficult, but at the same time, you could get lucky in terms of avoiding the right players, avoiding the right situation. Um, because survival is the main aspect of the game, a lot of players can survive just by playing overly cautious, just by playing um, overly careful. Um, and it doesn't necessarily, you know, there's not a kill requirement for winning a battle royale. You don't need to get five minimum kills. If ever, if a battle royale win only counted if you had five minimal kills and it only went to the person, you know, if, if let's say, um, the person who came in first didn't get five minimal kills, then it went to the second person or the first person or the third person or the fourth person, you know, there would be a lot less people out there with battle royale wins. Um, but as a result, it kind of feels like this, it, it creates this system where anyone can get a W, where anyone can feel like they're a really good player. And when you tell someone you've got wins in the Battle Royale, you don't need to tell them the full story. Um, you can just tell them, you know, oh yeah, I've gotten a couple wins. Oh, have you? And, you know, they don't know the full story that you hid on top of a roof with a sniper rifle just killing and you managed to somehow barely clutch the 1v1. Or you could even be playing a team game battle royale where your team kind of carry you to the end. You're constantly getting revived, but you still get the W. There's ways to feel like a legend in a battle royale and feel like you're on top of the world that just aren't present in these Team Slayer games. And when you feel like you're playing cybernetic uh you know gods of the game who how you know they could be playing 10 hours a day on this call of duty they could be uh learning all the maps they could have watched an ali a video and learned the perfect loadout to uh you know 
kill you in the most expertise uh, fashion known to man. It's just problematic for a lot of people that don't want to deal with it. Yeah. It's demotivating. It's depressing uh, to be face-to-face -face with um, your lack of skill or your lack of optimization uh, compared to the average gamer. And I think that's where Battle Royales have stepped in and taken that huge piece of the pie. And uh, I don't really know. I mean, you know, Overwatch, which is the game in the background, uh, that kind of shows another take on it where it's like th this game gives you roles which you don't necessarily have to be uh, insane at shooters and learn all those things. They give you roles where it's like, well, you have this one simple job. If you stick to doing that job, you can still do well, even if you're not like one of the greatest players out there. Or you could get, you know, lucky with the, the way that the team mechanics work um, and have a tank or have a DPS that is willing to be the backbone of your team. Um, I think more and more we're going to see shooters that avoid the direct confrontation because it doesn't attract player bases at this point in time. You know, proving who the better player is in the lobby isn't really top and, f and you know, first and foremost in, in a lot of gamers' minds right now because that's just like a depressing reality and it's harder to keep up and it's unlikely that people will. You know, I've noticed that trend over the years myself where it's like, you know, it... Yeah, back in the day, becoming the best player in a lobby was actually pretty easy because most people didn't watch YouTube. Most people didn't watch commentaries. And the sheer fact that I watched commentaries and I like found out loadouts that worked really well and I knew what the overpowered guns were just through research meant that I was far, far, far superior to the average gamer. But that doesn't necessarily hold true. You have to do the right kind of research. A lot of people are doing that research. I have this one example with Fall Guys of all games where... Um, I was, you know, this isn't a shooter example, but it is a, a good example nonetheless, um, where there's this, this level called lily pad leapers and, um, there's this one optimized route, uh, for the map. And I remember I saw it on a TikTok and I thought to myself, well, if I learn that, I'm never not going to come first on that map. It's just that simple. And when I learned the map, I realized that about 20 out of the 40 people who would be on the mission with me were doing the exact same optimized route. They were going the shortcut way. They were timing their dives in the exact way. And it could only have been possible if they watched the way the video had been done. And it just goes to show that more and more people are privy uh, to the research of like online um you know, exploits or online multiplayer advantages that, you know, it's just harder and harder to keep up. Um, and I find it depressing. I'm a Battle Royale hater. I love the old aspect of team shooters. This isn't me saying, oh, I'm so glad that it works this way. I'm actually a bit disappointed. I don't really like Battle Royales. But nonetheless, I thought I'd share my take and you guys can uh, let me know if you agree or disagree. Uh, but anyway, I've been Modest Major. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Peace out.